Hello everyone, this is Stephen Clark. I'm here to give you a light-hearted look at the latest news from Thailand. Okay, we'll have a look at Pratt, a 16-year-old girl who drove her car into the back of a van and killed nine people. Her esteemed family have not yet paid compensation, which they agreed on, but we'll look at that later on. Phuket in trouble, not having enough tourists visiting. And a special report from Johnny Sellen on a Perth couple for two years were in excruciating pain from a virus or a bug in their food that they got from Thailand in some Pad Thai. Two years of suffering. We'll take a look at that. But first we'll look at a car that was cut in half when it hit a barrier in the suburbs of Thailand, Bangkok. How fast was it going? A blue sedan travelling at high speeds collides with a barrier. Loses control and the car actually splits in half. In northern Bangkok, a 29-year-old driver lost control of his car and ran it into a roadside barrier. And would you believe it? Snapping the car in half. The two occupants were still in the car when it came to a halt. The driver released his and his girlfriend's seatbelt buckles and they got, proceeded to get out of the car. When the emergency services arrived, they were sitting on the grass near their car, probably wondering how close they came to death and what would be their next move. You know, walking away from an incident like that would make you think and drive a bit more carefully, wouldn't you think? The burnt out wreck of the rear of the car was 10 metres further on down the road and the only injuries this couple got was a small red mark on the neck of the driver from the seatbelt. But there was no other marks on either of their bodies despite the actual ripping apart of their car. I don't know, what speed would you have to be doing for a car to be ripped in half like that? And in the suburbs of Bangkok, I mean, if you hit a barrier, you'd have to be going extremely fast to rip your car in half. And the roadside barrier to snap off the rear of the car completely. Like that, uh, he must have hit that very, very, very hard. So what speed was he doing? Isn't it wonderful the speed they do in Bangkok? And the way some people drive in Bangkok? Unbelievable. Bangkok. Nearly nine years after a wealthy teen killed nine people in a car crash, victims came forward Tuesday to say they have never received an apology, much less compensation. On the night of December the 27th, 2010, when Prayarat, who was then 16 and unlicensed, she was driving a Honda Civic that ran into the back of a passenger van on the Dongmyong Airport Tollway. The van then crashed into a safety barrier Passengers were thrown from the vehicle over the safety barrier and fell many metres to the road below. Nine people were killed in this accident. Prayat sustained only minor injuries. After the accident, she was photographed calmly chatting on her mobile phone beside her car. Very famous photo. Orican Prua Safezaden Noi Ihaya Prayawat was 16 when she drove her car into a Tomasat University van on December the 27th, 2010, killing nine people. Since then, she has become a symbol of wealth and powerful avoiding jail after committing serious criminal offences. Instead of time in prison, she was ordered to serve 138 hours of community service, which was completed in 2016. Now victims are saying that they haven't been compensated for the death of their relatives and injuries sustained. Even though the civil case against Prayar finally ended on May the 8th, it has also emerged that Prayar's family identified themselves as an esteemed family in society. In a court argument to prolong the compensation dispute, Compensation was supposed to be paid within 30 days, but none of the victims have received any more than two months after the resolution of the case. Prayar's legal representatives kept slashing down the agreed upon compensation after the crash, which left a lot of victims with multiple injuries. Prayer had went and visited some of the victims in hospitals with her mother, and as she walked into the hospital, she asked for a wheelchair and run around uh, apologising to some of the victims uh, in the wheelchair and uh, offered them sweets and uh, took the photo with them and, uh, well, what you call it, a selfie shots and that was it. Prayer at lawyers have pushed for lower and lower compensation. In April 2017, total restitution was cut down from 30 million baht to 19 million baht for nine families as compensation. Prayer at lawyers argued in court like as if it was a vegetable sale or a fish sale and then gradually got the price down and down as compensation 
due to the fact that their family had done a lot for Thailand and were a high society family. According to court documents, Prayarat appears to have changed her names after getting married. She's 25 today. After her marriage in 2014 to former National Legislative Assembly member, she changed her name again. Maybe she doesn't like Prayer Rat anymore. An image of Prayer Rat texting next to her crashed car has become a symbol of the Thai justice system legacy, which seems to be reserved only for the wealthy and powerful. Since the crash, Thailand has seen several high-profile cases in which influential figures have managed to escape harsh punishments for alleged crimes. An actress avoids jail time after crashing and killing a cop. A businessman is out on bail after killing two students in a car crash. The Red Bull Air skips town after crashing and killing a policeman in 2012. Prayer Rat was 16 when she caused this fatal crash. Apparently she was given a car to drive at her age. She didn't have a license, she was 16 years old. So should not the high society mother and father pay for the damages their daughter pray at at 16 years old with no license? They were in charge of that girl. They should pay compensation and they should pay it in full to the victims. The people of Thailand want justice. Is the Thai government going to step in and see that it is given? Well, now it's Phuket's turn. Phuket tourism down 30%. Not only Phuket and Pattaya, but all over Thailand. Quotes by a leading hotelier. It was obvious that Phuket is going down the pan. It's been obvious to everyone that tourism has been on the decline for years, with less tourists and less revenue. But why is it so? June has always been the worst month of a tourism, with it being low season, but this year, it's been terrible for them. And yesterday, a tourism official in Pattaya also admitted a 20 to 30 percent reduction year in year for June. But there are hopes that Asian and Australian travellers will take up some slack in July and August. But that is all they are hoping. Most people are expecting July to be just as bad as June. Could be a number of reasons for this, such as the uh, sluggish world economy that sees people travelling and spending less. The trade war between the US and China is also affecting investments and investors, as well as tourists themselves who are running scared. You can also lay part of the blame for the situation in Phuket fairly and squarely with the Thais themselves. The unpredictable and unclear political situation was scaring people. The continuing uncertainty and the extremely long process of forming a new government has been well terrible for tourism and safety concerns of tourists had not been properly addressed leading to a lack of confidence. For years the tourist market in Phuket saw sustained growth that promoted a building boom of hotels but the increase that saw tourists rise from 9 million visitors a year to 14 million within five years well has not been maintained. Hotels with new facilities have no guests to fill them and investors are not getting expected returns. More rooms, more restaurants has meant more competition. Efforts to get customers back by hotels are offering 50% less than they did last year in the low season. Not looking good. A Perth couple have achieved notoriety after their trip to Thailand claiming that eating one dish at a food court, the popular Thai food Pad Thai, which is probably one of the most popular dishes in Thailand. They claimed that after eating the pad thai, they then felt sick and took the next aeroplane back to Perth. Uh, the notoriety uh, has come forward on social media both and the news because of their claims of parasites. Uh, upon hearing this, the Thai Ministry, Health Ministry investigated the report and with different vendors in that same venue had pad thai cooked and checked the temperatures. Thai Health Ministry came back and then reported that there would be no bacteria because of the cooking temperature. So since that was reported back, the couple has then changed their uh, ideas that maybe it was the juice that they drank. Yeah, thanks Johnny. It must have been a horrendous experience for them. Um, I don't know they could have survived all that. Uh, the, yes, it was an attack of the killer pad thai. It's been a horrendous experience for them after eating their pad thai. Oh, hang on, latest news is they think it might have been the actual juice. But who knows? Well, that's a nice outfit she's got on there. Yeah. Anyway, we'll be watching this story and keep you posted as things develop. 
Okay, thanks for watching. That's all we've got for you today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if you enjoyed this film. And we'll see you again shortly.